In this recording, we look at how to work out integrals of hyperbolic functions where the integrand is a product of a power of sine x and a power of cos x, where at least one of these two hyperbolic functions is to an odd power. It's best to illustrate this with an example. The method's reasonably similar to if you're looking at trigonometric functions involving an odd power of sine or cos x when you've got a product of those functions. But it is just slightly different because your hyperbolic function identities are different to your trigonometric identities. So let's have a look to see how this works. The first step we do is break off a single factor of the function that is to an odd power. And if both sine and cos are to an odd power, you can choose either, but it's easiest to use the one that's to the lower power. In this case, however, only sine x is raised to an odd power, namely to the power of 3. So therefore, we will rewrite this integral as cos to the 4x sine squared x times sine x dx. And why this is useful to do will soon become clear. And the next step is with the exception of this factor on the end sine x that we've broken off, we want everything else to be rewritten in terms of the other hyperbolic function. So in this case, we want everything else to be written in terms of cos x. And that means we want to replace the remaining part of sine x function, which here is it's just sine squared x part. We want to replace that in terms of the other hyperbolic function, which in this case is cos x. So using our identity, cos squared x minus sine squared x equals 1. If we rearrange that, we get negative sine squared x equal to 1 minus cos squared x. Then multiplying through by minus 1, it becomes sine squared x equals cos squared x minus 1. So that therefore, this part here, this sine squared x part of the integrand is going to be rewritten as cos squared x minus 1 so that we now have the integral of cos to the 4x times cos squared x minus 1 times sine x dx. So you'll notice that we now have a reasonably complicated expression involving powers of cos x and this is multiplied by sine x dx. So the next step is to use integration by substitution where in this case we let u be equal to cos x as that is the function that we have the more complicated expression in relation to. We then work out du dx which is sine x. So that's convenient. Rearranging that, we get du is sine x dx. So you can see that when we do the substitution, this part will be replaced with an expression involving powers of u, and the sine x dx will simply become du. Making those substitutions, this first part, cos to the power of 4x, is going to become u to the power of 4. This next bit, cos squared x minus 1, that will be u squared minus 1. As we've said, the sine x dx bit will just become du. So now we have an integral that looks a lot easier to deal with. The next step will just be to expand the brackets, which will give u to the power of 6 minus u to the power of 4 as the expression that we're now integrating with respect to u. Working out that integral, that just becomes u to the power of 7 divided by 7 minus u to the power of 5 on 5 plus c. And I've just written a little reminder there, u was cos x, so we can now rewrite all of this in terms of powers of cos x. So that's cos to the power of 7x divided by 7 minus cos to the power of 5x divided by 5 plus c, where that was the integral of what we started with, which was cos to the power of 4x 
times shine to the power of 3x dx. That's the integral we were working out when we started. So just a quick recap of what we did. The hyperbolic function, in this case shine x, which appeared to an odd power in the integrand, we broke off a single factor of this, so that in this case it became shine squared x times shine x. We then replaced this bit that still remained, the shine squared x part, with an expression in terms of cos squared x, and that allowed us to then use integration by substitution in order to find our integral.